हेलो हेलो बिबल हेलो दीपम ज्योति परम ज्योति दीप ज्योति जनगणा दीप हर तो हरे स्वाप दीप ज्योति नमस्तुति शुभम कर तु कल्याण आरोग्यम सुख संपदम वेश बुद्धि विनाशाय आत्म ज्योति नमस्तुते आत्म ज्योति प्रदीप्ताय ब्रह्म ज्योति नमस्तुते ब्रह्म ज्योति प्रदीप्ताय गुरु ज्योति नमस्तुते ओ शांति 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 गुरु तो आत्म दर्शन करेंगे ब्रह्म दर्शन करेंगे वन ऑफ यू प्रेजेंट टुडे ब्रह्म आरु जाए कि पुन ब्रह्म आरु गुरु को ना ये मोमेंट ऑफ एक्सट्रीम प्लेजर टू वेलकम द गेस्ट हु आर प्रेजेंट हियर टू अटेंड द आईसीपीआर स्पॉन्सर्ड ओबनर सीरीज ऑन रीअप्रेजल ऑफ सिस्टम एंड प्रॉब्लम्स सेलिब्रेटिंग द सेंटेनरी ईयर ऑफ प्रोफेसर एस एन दास गुप्ता ऑफ हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडियन फिलोसॉफी ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ इंडियन फिलोसॉफर्स डे I welcome all of you, respected Chairman Dr. Gopal Haldar, Vikram Dev Bottom College, Jaipur. Today's chief speaker, Professor Ganesh Prasad Das, formerly head PG Department of Philosophy, Utkal University, Bani Bihar, formerly executive member of ISPR, New Delhi, Vice President, All Odisha Philosophy Association, and co-speaker, Dr. Srimati Charuvala Mahanti, retired Assistant Professor, Chaudhary College, Kotak. Thank you so much, sir and madam, for accepting our invitation and coming over for this seminar. Now, I request our principal, chairman of this session, to give a welcome address. Respected. Chief Speaker, Professor Ganesh Prasad Das, formerly head of PG Department of Philosophy, former executive member of ICPR New Delhi, Vice President All Odisha Philosophy Association, respected Dr. Simati Charuvala Mahanti, Assistant Professor, retired Chaudhary College, Kotak, my uh, colleagues. and particularly head of the department of philosophy convenors coordinators all the students and all the participants it is uh, a privilege on my part that we are organizing the series lectures on the theme reappraisal of system and problems and celebrating the centenary of professor s n dasgupta dasgupta's history of indian philosophy fifth volume he is one of he was one of the greatest philosophers of india and on this occasion our college and the pg department of philosophy organizing such a great academic event i hope all the participants will be enlightened by the great deliberations that will continue in the last in the next eight lectures which will be uh, delivered by uh, greatest personalities academicians particularly the philosophers of our country so again i sincerely extend my thanks to icpr sponsoring this uh, lectures to our college and i am also proud of my teachers our uh, department of philosophy 
for organizing this i hope you will enjoy this uh, event throughout and you will be certainly benefited from the knowledge that will be showered or shared by our great personalities today uh, professor ganesh prasad das and dr charuvala mahanti thank you thank you all ha ah, sir namaskar thank you sir for your inaugural address again i welcome all of you you know that the department of philosophy is going to organize four days national webinar series from 11th august to 14th august each day there have two lectures the significance of indian philosophy in the present scenario is highly essential india has a rich tradition of intellectual inquiry and a textual heritage that goes back to several hundreds of years the human planet is in a spiritual moral and material crisis needless to say that a proper understanding of all these principles will be contribute will be contributes to the solution of manifold problems confronting the humanity in search of peace in india religion and philosophy they are not isolated practices practices where they are intertwined with life in the age of globalization we have to reaffirm faith in indian ethos so in this uh, occasion we are going to organize this webinar series for remember the professor s n das gupta who was born in 1885 Indian philosopher noted for his authoritative his famous for his book a history of indian philosophy the first volume was written in 1922 professor das gupta received master degree in sanskrit and philosophy from sanskrit college in calcutta During the early 1920, he traveled to England, where he earned a doctor in philosophy from the University of Cambridge. His other major works include Yoga as a Philosophy and Religion in 1924, and Indian Idealism in 1933. His philosophical system synthesized aspects of Vedantic literature, Indian Jainism, the British and American school of New Realism, and the theory of emergent evolution. these are the greatest works by the professor s n das gupta so we are very fortunate that we are going to organize this webinar series i express my heartfelt gratitude to the icpr for financial assistance i also express my gratitude to professor ganesh prasad das who is the main architecture of this event now i invite sri francis bala assistant professor of philosophy to give a short introduction of our today's guest uh very good afternoon to all the participants uh respected principal and all the resource persons present over here virtually as well as all the participants uh and your students pg department of philosophy become the bottom of the school jaipur it's my great privilege 
great uh, privilege to welcome you all to this uh, lecture series uh, which is sponsored by icpr new delhi on the occasion of indian philosophers day the theme of the lecture series is celebrating the centenary of professor s n das gupta's history of indian philosophy you know that our institute bikram de patan house college is also celebrating its 75th year of its existence in this year so it is also a proud moment for orga organizing this kind of academic activities we also going to organize a lot of different academic activities throughout the years so uh, particularly we have uh, the opportunity to, uh, opportunity to our uh, two speaker we have professor ganesh prasad das today professor ganesh, uh, ganesh prasad das is a formerly head of pg department of philosophy and former executive member icpr new delhi and also vice president all odisha philosophical association a person who does not need any introduction and we really we really proud to have such a eminent speaker sir you are muted unmute yourself hello 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 kon jo ne ho हेलो हेलो सर तो माइक्रोफोन तो सर सर नमस्कार सर मु झाडेश्वर कोटी म्यूट होई जाई छी कोंडा है जी तो द स्पीकर तो म्यूट म्यूट पोजीशन को चली आसी से कोई शुभ नहीं सर के तमर नाम और म्यूट होई कार म्यूट होई जी सर एक्चुअली लक्ष्मण रो जोठी तार मेन स्टेशन तो किछि सेटी होई छी सर मोटे जी मोन म्यूट अछि हां सर एबे हेलो वन सेकंड सर we on the behalf of pg department of philosophy we welcome you all to this uh, lecture series we have we have with us another speaker today dr charuwala mahanti retired assistant professor chaudhar college kotak and it's my honor to introduce dr mahanti dr mahanti was completed her ma in 1981 she uh, sorry she completed mphil 
in 1988 and PhD in 2005 from Utkal University, Bhubaneswar. She joined as a lecturer at Siddhasar College or Mother Road, Baleshwar from 1981 to 1985. She also worked as a lecturer in Amrathi, Amrathi Devi Owens College, Kotak from 1985 to 2004. Finally, she retired from Chaudhar College, Kotak, and she worked there from 2014 to 2019. Today, she will be delivering a lecture on Advaita conception of mind. So, once again, I welcome to this uh, welcome series, madam, and definitely our our audience, our students, or uh, all the participants, those who are connected through the virtual modes, they will greatly benefited by the topic or by the lecture. So once again, I welcome you all to this uh, lecture series. And now may I request Professor Ganesh Prasad Das to deliver his lecture. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Aji Prakutar wrote about Subhadi, no? आमी आज पालन को उसे रखिया बंद होना, चाहिए तो उसी बड़ोवाड़ मोनिवांग कर जन्म दिन हो, फिर बड़ोवाड़ I was Joko Ebon Tara Abahako Ebon Taro Labho Ade Korea Benjamin of Pusses or Sunday Beneficiaries Samastan Prati Asirbal Vasakurunt Saman in your Professor Halder, coordinator of the seminar, head of the department, Dr. Lokman Patra, Dr. Lepnant Lokman Patra, Tankar Sahajogi Brunda, Odisha and Odisha Bahar. जो सहभागी माने उपस्थित अछंती सेमिनार रे हॉल रे हो बा क्लाउड चेंबर रे हो समस्तन को शुभ अपरान्न शुभेच्छा लेफ्टिनेंट मते बडो डर मान लेनी आजकली Emitisia on Nisha Square Pokutundi, a baby would seminar Jaitla, Pony Pilango Porica, Chulico Gri, I would seminar. Say Tirepuni, Didina Guru, Montaga Guru, Didina Guru, Royal Seminar, Concon Korea Con, Montaga Guru John Gurun. In the Tanyamania Kuripokus on Saktam, a youth. To be a beset or chi. Mopay as a loch and a career pay. Surin Nadas Kutong Bissere. Take a tremuni jay. I see pair cookies in Torres or just curtly. Name a silver so this curtly. Came into Kayani Akripola. The Surin Nadas Kutongro. A history of Indian philosophy. Prothom volumed it for Paisla. 
ଉଣେଇଶହ ବାଇଶ ମସିହାରେ ମୁଁ ଦେଖିଲି ସୁରେନ୍ଦ୍ର ଦାସ ବ୍ୟକ୍ତିତ୍ୱ କାମଟା ଗୋଟେ ବଡ ମନୁମେଣ୍ଟାଲ ୱାର୍କ ଦେଉଳ ସମ ଗୋଟେ କୀର୍ତ୍ତି ତାର ଶତବାର୍ଷିକ ପାଳନ ହବନି ଟ୍ରାକ୍ଟରଟୋଲୋଜିକ ଫିଲୋସଫିକ ହଉଛି ୟୁରୋପରେ ଆମର ଏଠି ହବନି ହିଷ୍ଟ ଅଫ ଇଣ୍ଡିଆନ ଫିଲୋସଫି ଉପରେ ଦାସଗୁପ୍ତଙ୍କର ସେକ୍ରେଟେରୀ ଆଇସିପିଆର ସମ୍ମତି ସୂଚକ ଚିଠି ମୋତେ ଲେଖିଥିଲେ କରିବା ବୋଲି କିନ୍ତୁ ସିଏ କଣ କରୁଛନ୍ତି ବା ନ କରୁଛନ୍ତି ମୋ ପାଖରେ କିଛି ଖବର ନାହିଁ କାହିଁକିନା ବର୍ତ୍ତମାନ ଏକ୍ଜିକ୍ୟୁଟିଭ ସିଜ୍ କରିଯାଇଛି ନୂଆ ଏକ୍ଜିକ୍ୟୁଟିଭ ଆସିନି ଆମର କାର୍ଯ୍ୟକାଳ ସରିଯାଇଛି କିନ୍ତୁ ଯେଉଁ ଇଣ୍ଡିଆନ ଫିଲୋସଫି ଡେ ପାଇଁ ଲକ୍ଷ୍ମଣଙ୍କୁ ମିଳିଥିଲା କିଛି ପଇସା ସେ ପଚାରିବାରୁ ମୁଁ ତାଙ୍କୁ ସଜେଷ୍ଟ କଲି ଯେ ଏଇଭଳିଆ ଅଫ ଇଣ୍ଡିଆନ ଫିଲୋସଫିକାଲ ପ୍ରୋବ୍ଲେମସ ଉପରେ ଆଲୋଚନା କରି ଦାସ ଉତ୍ତମକୁ ସେଠି ରଖାଯାଉ ଯାହା ଜାଣିଲି ଆଠଟା ଲେକ୍ଚର ତ ହବ ସେଥିରେ ବିଭିନ୍ନ ଟପିକ ଅଛି ଆଲୋଚନା କରିବା ପାଇଁ ସୁରେନ୍ଦ୍ର ଦାସଗୁପ୍ତଙ୍କ ବିଷୟରେ ଦିଟା ଅଛି ମୋତେ ଗୋଟେ କହିବା ପାଇଁ କୁହାଯାଇଛି ଆଉ ଗୋଟେ ସରୋଜ ଘର କରିବେ ତେବେ ଏ ଗୋଟେ ବ୍ୟକ୍ତିତ୍ୱ ପାଇଁ ମୁଁ କହିଲି ଗୋଟେ ତାଙ୍କ ପାଇଁ ଗୋଟେ ପ୍ରାର୍ଥନା ତିଆରି କରିବା ସଂସ୍କୃତରେ ଏବଂ ମୁଁ ତ ସଂସ୍କୃତରେ ନିଜେ କରିପାରିବିନି ଯେତିକି ଗୋଟେ ଅଧା ଖଣ୍ଡିଆ କରି କରିଥିଲି ଆଉ ଜଣେ ବନ୍ଧୁଙ୍କୁ କହିଲି କି ସଜାଡ଼ି ଦେବା ପାଇଁ ପ୍ରାର୍ଥନାଟି ଏହିପରି ବାଗଦେବୀ ବର ପ୍ରାପ୍ତାୟ ଚନ୍ଦ୍ରଶେଖର ସେବିନେ ବାଗଦେବୀ ବର ପ୍ରାପ୍ତାୟ ଚନ୍ଦ୍ରଶେଖର ସେବିନେ ସୁରେନ୍ଦ୍ରନାଥ ଦାସାୟ ଗୁପ୍ତାୟ ନମ ସଂଜ୍ଞକେ ଯେ ତମେ ବାଗଦେବୀଙ୍କର ବର ପ୍ରାପ୍ତ ହେଇଛ ଚନ୍ଦ୍ରଶେଖରଙ୍କ ସେବା କରିଛ ତମେ ଯେଉଁ ଜ୍ଞାନ ପାଇଛ ତମକୁ ତମ ଜ୍ଞାନକୁ ନମସ୍କାର ଜଣାଉଛି ତେବେ ଏ ବିଷୟରେ ଚର୍ଚ୍ଚା କରିବାକୁ ଗଲାବେଳେ ତ କହିଦେଲି ସୁରେନ୍ଦ୍ର ଦାସଗୁପ୍ତଙ୍କ ବିଶ୍ୱ ଫିନିଅନ ଫିଲୋସଫିରେ କରିବା ବୋଲି ମୋର ସେତେବେଳେ ଗୋଟେ ଧାରଣା ହେଇଥିଲା ଯେତେ ସବୁ ଇଣ୍ଡିଆନ ଫିଲୋସଫି ଏପର୍ଯ୍ୟନ୍ତ ଲେଖା ଗଲାଣି ସେ ଉପରେ ଗୋଟେ କମ୍ପାରିଟିଭ ଷ୍ଟଡି କରିବା କିଏ କେଉଁ ଆଭିମୁଖ୍ୟ ନେଇକିରି ଲେଖିଛନ୍ତି ଏବଂ ସେ ଆଭିମୁଖ୍ୟ କେତେ ଦୂର ପର୍ଯ୍ୟନ୍ତ ସେମାନେ ପୂରଣ କରିପାରୁଛନ୍ତି ଏ କଥା ଭାବିଲି ସିନା କିନ୍ତୁ ସେ କଥା ହେଇପାରିଲାନି ଆଉ ଗୋଟେ ଆଡ଼େ ମନ ପଶିଗଲା ଦେଖିଲି ଯେ ସୁରେନ୍ଦ୍ର ଦାସକୁ ତ ନିଜେ ଖାଲି କ'ଣ ହିଷ୍ଟ ଅଫ ଇଣ୍ଡିଆନ ଫିଲୋସଫି ଲେଖିଛନ୍ତି ଦେଖିଲା ବେଳକୁ ବହୁତ ବଗିଚା ଲେଖିଛନ୍ତି ଏବଂ ଅଗାଧ ପାଣ୍ଡିତ୍ୟ ମହାନ ବିଦ୍ବତ୍ତା ମୁଁ କହିଲି ସେସବୁ ନୂଆ କଥା କ'ଣ କହିଛନ୍ତି ଦେଖିକିରି ତା ଉପରେ ଗୋଟେ କ'ଣ କହିବା ଦେଖିଲି ସେଥିରେ ବହୁତ ନୂଆ କଥା ଅଛି ତା ଭିତରେ ପଶିଲେ ବାହାରି ହେବନି ତା ପାଇଁ ପୁରାପୁରି ଗୋଟେ ତିନି ଦିନିଆ ସେମିନାର ଦରକାର ହେଇପାରେ ତେଣୁକରି ସେଥିରୁ ନିବୃତ୍ତ ରହିଲି ଏବଂ ଯାହା କରିବା ପାଇଁ ଚାହିଁଲି କରିବି ସେଟା ହେଉଛି ସୁରେନ୍ଦ୍ର ଦାସଗୁପ୍ତ ଏବଂ ତାଙ�୍କର କୃତି ବିଷୟରେ କେତେକ ଇନଫର୍ମେସନ ଦେବି ଯେଉଁ ଇନଫର୍ମେସନ କି ନୂଆ ଛାତ୍ରଛାତ୍ରୀ ନୂଆ ଶିକ୍ଷକ ଶିକ୍ଷୟତ୍ରୀ ସେମାନଙ୍କୁ କିଛି ପରିମାଣରେ ମୋଟିଭେଟ୍ କରିପାରେ ଫର ଫର୍ଦର ଷ୍ଟଡି ମୋତେ ଲାଗୁଛି ସୁରେନ୍ଦ୍ର ଦାସଗୁପ୍ତଙ୍କର ଏତେ ବହି ଥିଲା ଏଠି ଏତେ ସୁନ୍ଦର କୃତି ସବୁ ଥିଲା ମୋତେ ଆଗରୁ କିଏ କହିଲାନି ଏଗୁଡା ପଢ଼ ବୋଲି ସେ ତ ପଢ଼ିଥିଲେ ଯାହା ଲାଭ ହେଇଥାନ୍ତା ତା ଅପରିକଳ୍ପନୀୟ ତାପରେ କୌଣସି ଜିନିଷ ଉପରେ ମୋତେ କହିବାକୁ କୁହାଗଲେ ମୋର ଗୋଟେ ମଧୁଣ ହେଇପାରେ ଯେ ପୁରା ଫିଲ୍ଡଟା ନ ଦେଖିଲେ ସେ ଫିଲ୍ଡରେ ତାକୁ ଲୋକେଟ୍ ନ କଲେ ମୁଁ କହିବା ପାଇଁ କନଫିଡେନ୍ସ ପାଇପାରେନି ସେଇପାଇଁ ମୋତେ ବେଶୀ ନର୍ଭସ ଲାଗୁଥିଲା ଏବଂ ଏଇନା ଯେତେବେଳେ ଲକ୍ଷ୍ମଣ ପଣ
कोड़े मिनट खंड थाई गिरी पंद्रह मिनट थाई गिरी मुझे रोम है तो तोर तोर कौन पहुंच बिस्तर आ चुके मनोरंजन सीधी करे मेरे हॉटेस्ट सीधी वाला मनोपल ला लखन फोन कर चला परे मुझे मुझे को तेरा कोई चीज़ ठीक ना नहीं गोटे निर्दिष्ट को था उपरे किची कोया कु जाई बाक किची लेखियो कु जाई ये तो मनुष्य बहुत सुची छेतोर कौन खाली शायद दौर ची लेखी दिव्य ची कॉलम रो बोई हो ची कोता उड़ा बोई जाई परे बाग देविंग रो बरो प्राप्तो उस अपुंगो मने थाई परंती तो मुझे भी कोई परी भी नहीं पूरा फील्ड रे ऑब्जेक्ट को लोकेट नो करले से विषय किच कोई हो मतलब लागी लाव टाटे ये और जनों तो चक्कर था कोई इसलिए कितना रे जितने वाला और जनों दोनों शिक्षा करते हैं दोनों विद्या शिक्षा करते हैं गुरु द्रोणों का करे जो तं परीक्षा करिए पे तं उन्हें गले क्षेत्रों पर गो विभिन्न हाँ स्पीकर मैंने रिक्वेस्ट कर चुन थी मैंने ये इंग्लिश या वो बढ़िया दीर्घ जारी कोई अपने बाहर आउटसाइड उसे बोल चुन था आउटसाइड मैंने नॉन ओडिया हाँ नॉन ओडिया बहुत बोल चुन थी बाहर बोल चुन थी मुंबई बर्दवान ऐसे बोल चुन थे अच्छा अच्छा ठीक है तो फिर ना ही आई एम गिवन ए टॉपिक � I am always in a disturbed position. I just want to locate the topic in the broad field. Indeed, in the background of the whole field, so that I may have the confidence to speak something about it. And while thinking about this, I just hit upon the idea that it is Arjun who was doing all this. While he was learning at the feet of Dronacharya, the art of archery, the, all the Vidya Putras, this is a very nice word that is there in Sarala Mahavarata, Vidya Putra. It is not Sishya, it is not disciple, it is not student, but it is Vidya Putra. Sishya, student, they have their own connotations, their own attributes, which uh, are laden with certain values. But while speaking uh, or while using the word Vidya Putra, those things are absent. No, no such attributions are there. Uh, it is just neutral. So, Vidya Putra, original is Vidya Putra of uh, Dronacharya and others also, all the Pandavas. They were taken for a test. A bird was uh, sitting on a tree in the branch of a tree and they were asked to aim at the eye of that bird. Not looking at it, but looking at the reflection. Uh, so when they were asked as to what they were uh, viewing, of all Arjuna said that I view nothing except the eyeball of the bird. And he was the most successful archer of all. But then, for the sake of motivation, uh, the learners are given this example that you all be pinpointed in your outlook, in your thought, in your action. But then you will find that only this will not do at all. Aiming at the eyeball of a bird in the field and piercing it with, with, with uh, an arrow 
is not the be all and end all of your work coming to the gita the same arjuna had to learn many other things along with that in order that his knowledge might be full and complete and perfect and the person may be full and complete and perfect that is it to begin with there is a discourse philosophic discourse long philosophic discourse between arjuna and sri krishna then arjuna wanted to have vishwarupa darshana and he did have that if i can put it in the modern terminology i would say that targeting the eye of a bird is no how and knowing a lot of things about the world is known that and having vishwarupa darshana is no ought o u g h t so no how no that and no ought all the three make the complete whole of knowledge and the knowledge the possessor of that knowledge the acquirer of that knowledge becomes a perfect man so this is this is by the by as to why i wanted to have the whole field of work of dasgupta in my view anyway i will come to that lokman has already indicated uh, named some of the works that uh, dasgupta published i will give you some more now um at least 10 generations of students must have studied and benefited out of dasgupta's lifetime work if it is 100 years then it must be at least 10 generations of students students of students like that at least 10 generations must have benefited out of that the idea of uh, writing this was first suggested to dasgupta by lawrence john lumley dundas g c i e g c i e means these are all archaic terms uh, uh, nowadays people will not be able to grasp what that is that is a title of uh, indian empire under the british rule GCI means Grand Commander of the most eminent order of the Indian Empire. He was a Lawrence, who was formerly Chancellor of the University of Calcutta and Governor of Bengal. He indicated in his convocation address, while he was the Rector of the University, that the special need of the study of Indian philosophy by Indian students. is a must and is encouraged is in dasgupta in conversations and through letters after reading the manuscript which dasgupta prepared being enthused by his conviction at this while in my ba studies myself i am taking i am talking about myself while in my ba studies my teacher Dhrubadutti Chatterjee almost handed over to me the key of the philosophy library of BJB College. I saw a Sandas Gupta's history there, but it was a mountain for me, and I did not try my climb it, try to climb it. During my MA at Uthkal University. Sixty-eight, seventy. Professor G. C. Naik, Gorang Charan Naik, M. A. from Allahabad and Ph. D. from Bristol, 
was taking our classes in Indian philosophy. Once I asked him outside classroom whether it would be all right for me to follow Dasgupta. His reply was that it is an ocean. Read Radha Krishnan's first. I would not now enter into a comparison between the works of two giant figures, Dasgupta and Radha Krishnan, except the time worn comparison that Radha Krishnan's is in two volumes, whereas Dasgupta is in five. At the end, I will read out the beginning portion of uh, the works of both to show you how uh, they tally with one another. And that will be the concluding portion. Surinda Dasgupta was one of the most outstanding scholars India has ever produced. But his greatness could not continue in the heart and mind of his successors, and it rather declined because of them. How we shall get glimpses later on in due course. He was born on 18th October 1887. By the way, Radhakrishnan was born on 5th October 1888, according to the certificates. But uh, Radhakrishnan himself uh, informs that he was born on 17th April 75, 1875. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, he, he, he was born on 20th September 1887. The official date of birth is 5th October 1888, one year apart. This information is available in uh, S. Gopal's biography of Radhakrishnan. S. Gopal is his son. In the early years of Isin Dasgupta, between 5 and 8, while he did not know any Sanskrit, this is very astonishing, amazing. In his early years, between 5 and 8, while he did not know any Sanskrit, he showed certain remarkable gifts of answering philosophical and religious questions in a very easy and spontaneous manner. He could demonstrate the various yogic postures, asanas, and he used to pass easily into trance states while looking at the river Ganges or listening to some Kirtan song. Baba Vishta Yothle. He was visited by hundreds of learned men and pious saints at his father's residence at Kalihat and was styled Khoka Bhagavan. Koka in Bengali, Koka means child. Koka Bhagavan. Mention may particularly be made of Srimat Bijaya Krishna Goswami, Prabhu Jagat Bandhu, and Shivanarayana Paramahansa. He was sometimes taken to the Theosophical Society Calcutta, where a big audience used to assemble, and the boy was put on the table and questioned on the religious and theological matters. The answers that he gave were published in the Bengali and English newspapers along with the questions. Some of these are still preserved. Interestingly, <clears throat> uh, Dasuta himself quotes in one of his articles some of the questions and answers. They are like this. He says there, himself writes, the sorts of questions that I used to answer are as follows. What are those? These questions and answers are collected from a daily newspaper of 1894, a copy of which I have been able to preserve. Esanda Sutra have been, has, has been able to preserve. Question. 
what is the relation between knowledge and devotion beta khoka hoan bolta hai it is through knowledge that devotion springs gyana madhyam re bhakti sancharit hue question what is the nature of god answer he is a spiritual illumination which cannot be compared with any physical illumination the sun surya see we physical illumination but that spiritual illumination cannot be compared with this question what is the relation between prakriti that is primordial nature cause and purusha that is the soul answer the creation happens spontaneously from the prakriti under the direction of the purusha and both are intimately associated with each other like a lame man sitting on a shoulder of a blind man and directing him these are some of the samples of question answer that khuka bhavan was involved in <clears throat> he took his ma degree from sanskrit college calcutta in 1908 Lokan mentioned that uh, he took uh, his MA degree in Sanskrit and philosophy from Sanskrit College. Not that is that is not correct. He took his MA degree from Sanskrit College, Calcutta, in 1908. His fellow students noticed with interest his habits and peculiarities. He took no care of his clothes and hair. He studied on a mat with a pillow for his table. and his place was littered with books and papers though he did not talk very much he already had a reputation for scholarship when he was an ma student at the sanskrit college his scholarship in panini was so great that when even his teachers had differences of opinion about a grammatical matter he was called out of his class to solve it his past research work on nayo which was written while he was in the sanskrit college was read out before the pandits and was very highly appreciated by them and the then principal the mahamohapadha hp shastri also lauded him like anything incidentally it may be noted that nayo was not one of the subjects of his ma curriculum You see, one of the peculiar traits of Das Gupta was that he seldom used to learn anything from others. He had an inner pride that led him to learn everything by his own efforts. He never wanted any stimulus from outside. Kari kono se prachodana dorkar koron thi nahi se. motivation dar karne tangaro whenever he took up any work he threw his whole soul and being into it he passed his ma in philosophy as a private candidate in 1910 av divars pore summarizing all the prescribed books in his own way he was twice offered a state scholarship to study sanskrit in a scientific manner in europe but as he was the only child of his parents he refused out of consideration for their feelings he began his service at rajshahi college as an officiating lecturer in sanskrit rajshahi is in bangladesh now he was soon provided with a permanent professorship at chitagong college where he worked from 1911 to 1920 and 
and from 1922 to 1924. Dasgupta had taken the resolution that he would dedicate himself to the study of the Indian Shastras. Not only that, Indian Shastras in their entirety. Jethe Shastras is all over here. Philosophy is all over here. She is all over here. She is all over here. She is all over here. Anything. Anything the Shastras contain, any Shastra, anything, he would study them in entirety. For him, to take a resolution was to accomplish it. Taking a resolution for the sake of it, no, no. And to accomplish it, and while many of his colleagues enjoyed club life in an easygoing manner, he continued his studies for 14 hours or more a day, in spite of the teaching of his friends. But a grant of the kitchen, I really saw a very bossy port to corn port with it. Either on the Tihati got her. Eleven courtly, see a mind corn notice it on the common little. When Lord Ronald's day, Ronald's day, the governor of Bengal came to visit Chittagong College, he had a long talk with Professor Dasgupta in his classroom and was so much impressed by it that he expressed the desire that the first volume of the history of Indian philosophy might be dedicated to him. Originally, Dasupta's plan was to write out the history of Indian systems of thought in one volume. Therefore, he tried to condense the materials available within the compass of one book. But as he went on collecting materials from all parts of India, he huge mass of published and unpublished texts came to light. And the plan of the work enlarged more and more as he tried to utilize all the materials collected. As a matter of fact, his was the first and only attempt to write out in a systematic manner a history of Indian thought directly from the original sources in Sanskrit, Pali, and Prakrit. It was both important. This is very, very important because uh, ordinarily we who do not know all these things, I did not know all these things. Um, but I knew that uh, Radhakrishnan's book on Indian philosophy in two volumes were written with a band of pundits helping him. But here is one, and, and his Indian philosophy was published in uh, 1923, the next year will the centenary year of Radhakrishnan's Indian philosophy. Now, this uh, a history of Indian philosophy is written without any help from anybody and without using any translated work. All phrase from the original source in Sanskrit, in Pali, in Prakrit. That is the very uh, significant importance and value of the volumes. In a work of the 14th century AD, the Sarvardhasana Sangra of Madhvacharya, we find a minor attempt to give a survey of the different philosophical schools of India. But the account given there is very brief, and the work does not give an exhaustive survey of all the different systems of philosophy. In the present series, the author traced in a historical and critical manner. This is also very important. History is not just a record of what is written in the treatises, either in Sanskrit or in Pali or in Prakrit. There is a critical analysis, critical arrangement 
and critical relating themes one with the other. That is very much important that the Sutta did. Historical and critical manner. I was telling that uh, uh, I had an intention to put different histories of uh, philosophy of Indian thought side by side and tally them what is excellent in what. In fact, in foreign universities, there is study of comparative history of literature, English literature, I mean. But there is not even that in Indian universities. There is no comparative study of history of uh, English literature or Sanskrit literature or Odia literature here. Pick anyone, depend on that one and uh, pass the examination. Or pass the examination of, might be PG, might be PhD. So that is the trend here. But the trend there is in respect of English literature, a comparative study of all the histories written. Because uh, one history is written from one perspective, another is from another perspective, like this and like that. And when you see the different histories of uh, Western philosophy, you will find the difference. If you find Thilly, I also recommend, I always recommend Thilly to the uh, beginners. In Thilly, the attitude is to convey what is indisputably the facts presented by a particular philosopher. And that too, in a particular mode. He would put the received problem, then the solution of that particular philosopher, then the residual problem, like this. For example, what is the circumstances? in the surrounding of Descartes, so that he asked the particular question about the indubitable certainty of a truth. Then he gave his own solutions and left certain problems unsolved. Then Spinoza comes and we have the received problem, then Spinoza's solution and the residual, like this. That is silly. When we come to uh, Russell, that is a different thing altogether. How the socio-economic circumstances give rise to particular philosophical problems. So all the philosophers, they are not uh, just uh, products out of the blue. They are products out of uh, particular social conditions. Therefore, the history of philosophy is uh, that one which gives a fresh insight into the nature of things. Similarly, if you came to come to Wundelband, Wundelband's history of philosophy, you will find that the history of ideas concept-wise are taken up, not philosopher-wise. So there are different uh, angles of vision from which uh, am I audible? Lakhon huh? Subhuchina? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. We are very much audible. Then I got a phone as well. No, no, no. Both. No, Subhuchina. Okay, good. No, Subhuchina. 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 Okay, so uh, they, they, they have written histories of philosophy from different angles of vision. Similarly, the case here, uh, a history of philosophy. And by the way, the title given to the history written by Dasukta is A History of Indian Philosophy. And if you ask me, is there a title like this in Western philosophy? A History of Western philosophy? Yes. 
Russell history of philosophy is named like this, A history of Western philosophy. And I was searching whether anybody has written A history of European philosophy, no. There is nothing like this. So, coming to our point, uh, as uh, talking about Sarvadarshan Sangra, that gave a very that gave a very short account of the Indian philosophical systems, but Tasukta tried to give a zoom picture of all the systems that uh, is available in either Sanskrit, Pali, or Prakrit. He spared no pains and under, underwent a tremendous amount of drudgery in order to unearth the sacred, buried treasures of Indian thought. He revised his original plan of writing only one volume and thought of completing the task in five consecutive volumes, constituting a series. He shouldered this gigantic task all alone with a sincere devotion and on parallel enthusiasm and zeal. Dasuf had taken the Griffith Prize in 1916 and his doctorate in Indian philosophy in 1920. So, Dita has Dita subject re me, Dita subject re PhD. Gote PhD desare, Gote PhD be desare. Gote PhD which Indian philosophy opere, I would a PhD which European philosophy opere. Emithiki Kutmutaka is second example of me. That's what is unique in this. One PhD degree in Indian philosophy from one Indian university and another uh, PhD degree on Western philosophy from a Western university, Cambridge. Of course, he has a daily degree also. Maharaja Sir Manindra Chai Nandi now urged him to go to Europe to study European philosophy at its sources and generously bore all the expenses of research tour. Dasgupta went to England and he uh, and disguised himself, uh, I mean, uh, yes, disguised himself at Cambridge as a research student in philosophy. It's a professor. She is a research student who has a degree. Mark Taggart, Dr. Mark Taggart, no honor is Mark Taggart is a contemporary of uh, F.S. Bradley. And they are, Bradley and McTaggart are very big, absolute idealists in the West. During this time, the Cambridge University Press published the first volume of the history of Indian philosophy in 1921. He was also appointed lecturer at Cambridge and nominated to represent Cambridge University at the International Congress of Philosophy in Paris. His participation in the debates of Aristotelian Society London, the leading philosophical society in England, and of the Moral Sciences Club Cambridge earned him the reputation of being an almost invincible, controversial, great teachers of philosophy like Ward, James Ward, and Mark Taggart, on, under whom he studied, looked upon him not as their people, pupil, but as their colleague. He received his Cambridge doctorate for an elaborate thesis on contemporary European philosophy. In 1936 and 1939, he was invited as a visiting professor to Rome, and while in Rome, he delivered at the International Congress of Science in 1936, an address on the science of ancient India with such success that shouts of grand, grand cheered him through the session all the day. 
this led eventually to the conferment of the honorary delete upon him by the University of Rome in 1939, and military honors were given to him there. The University of Warsaw made him an honorary fellow of the Academy of Sciences. He was elected fellow of the Royal Society of Literature. The Society, this Amis du Monde of Paris, offered him a special reception. And M. Reno, professor of Sanskrit of the University of Paris, wrote to him afterwards. While you were amongst us, we felt as if a Sankara or a Patanjali was born again and moved amongst us. While you were amongst us, we felt as if a Sankara or a Patanjali was born again and moved amongst us. Dasupta was very kind, simple, and gentle. He was always undaunted in challenging scholars and philosophers. In the Second International Congress of Philosophy in Naples, the thesis of his paper was that Croesus, Croesus philosophy had been largely anticipated by some forms of Buddhism. This is also a very important observation. Crusades, uh, Benedict Crusade, an uh, important philosopher of the West, his philosophy had been largely anticipated by some forms of Buddhism, and that where Crusade differed, he was himself in error. On the account of internal differences, Crusade had no mind to join the Congress, but the fact that Dasupta was going to challenge his philosophy and prove it to be second-hand in open Congress induced him to do so. Eight got a kotha manukashchi kroseng kotharu jami janapurchi Buddhism in translation somehow found a place in Western university libraries. Kurose happened to read them and then was led to put a new form of philosophy without mentioning Buddhism in the idiom of the West. And Kurose was known as a very original philosopher until Dasupta encountered him and exploded his originality. This is also attested by another example. Uh, Professor Ganeshwar Mishra might be cited in this connection. While he was doing his PhD thesis under Professor AJR at London University on Sankara and Bradley, his observation is that Sankara's philosophy has somehow traveled to the West and Bradley somehow had access to it in translation and he put up a grand uh, philosophical system of absolute idealism in appearance and duality. Might be all these things go to buttress that uh, speculation that might be the grand thoughts of Indian philosophers are being copied and given new attire, new form in the Western idiom and uh, propagated as new philosophies. Disinterested love of learning and scientific accuracy were his watchwords, the suttas. Two things, what are, what are these? Love of learning, disinterested love of learning, love of learning, but not for any honor, not for any degree, but for the sake of it. And scientific accuracy must be faithful to the original, not, not from um, YouTube sources, not from uh, hearsays, 
not from this or that without acknowledgement कोटी कौन थी वो आकनालेज नौकरी करी फिर हम वो कोचिंग नालों से डाय ये कोचों थी ये जो वर्तन चोरी डॉक्टर थी वो चाली ची एकेडमिक्स रे बेसिक रोड़ी सरे और देखले वाला दुखला हुई थी आइडिया डॉक्टर थी दासुप्त है टू मेक ए मोस्ट पेंस्ट्रोकिंग टूर अब साउथ इंडिया टू कलेक्ट मट Though he was well known as a scholar of Sanskrit and philosophy, his studies on other subjects such as physics, biology, anthropology, history, economics, political philosophy, etc. are very considerable. Above all, he developed a new system of thought which was entirely his own. He intended to write out his philosophy in two volumes. His own attitude towards life and its problems was different from both the Eastern and Western thought, though very much enriched by a study of both and of the sciences in general and those of physics and biology in particular. He also started writing his biography, completed the introductory chapter and a brief sketch of some remarkable events of his career, but had to give it up for pressure of other work. He wrote an article giving the barest outline of his philosophy under the title Dependent Emergence in Contemporary Indian Philosophy, edited by Radhakrishnan and Moodhead. This is Jaipur College Library. I was going to say that this article is very important. It is very insightful article. It is very insightful article. It is very insightful article. चले आओ ची डिपेंडेंट इमर्जेंस से इधर इंडियन फिलोसफी हो ची वेस्टर्न फिलोसफी हो ची वेस्टर्न साइंस हो ची एवरीथिंग इज देयर क्रिटिकल एनालाइजिंग ऑल दी थिंग्स एंड देन सिंथेसाइजिंग देम इन 1924 अजय मार्क अपने अपने रिकॉग्निशन ऑफ इस स्कॉलरशिप ही वाज एडमिटेड टू इंडियन एजुकेशन सर्विस in Calcutta Presidency College and was posted as head of the Department of Philosophy. In 1931, he became principal of the Government Sanskrit College, Calcutta and ex officio secretary of the Bengal Sanskrit Association. In the latter capacity, he had to arrange about 218 papers in Sanskrit for Sanskrit title examinations for about 10,000 candidates coming from all parts of India. During the 11 years of his Principal Chief in Sanskrit College, he had worked in various ways for the advancement of Sanskrit learning and culture in India. In 1942, he retired from Sanskrit College and was appointed King George's fifth professor of mental and moral science in the University of Calcutta. It was a very prestigious chair. Radhakrishnan was in this chair from 1921. To 1926 before um, Dasupta. He worked there for three years and delivered the Stephanus uh, Nirmalendu lectures in the history of religions. He had been suffering from heart trouble since 1940 but was still carrying on his various activities and research work. In 1945, he retired from the Calcutta University and was offered the professorship of Sanskrit at Edinburgh, which had fallen vacant after the death of Professor Keith, A.B. Keith. The doctors also advised a trip to England. On his arrival in England, he fell ill again. Fell Ill again. In November 45, he delivered his last public lecture on Hinduism in Trinity College, Cambridge. Since then, he was confined to bed with acute heart trouble he stayed in England for five years, 1945 to 50. Even then, he published the fourth volume of his History of Indian Philosophy at the Cambridge University Press, the History of Sanskrit Literature at Calcutta University, and two other books, one on Aryan Tagore and another on aesthetics. In 1951, through friendly help given by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, he started writing 
the fifth and final volume of the history of Indian philosophy. He had also planned to write out uh, his own system of philosophy in two volumes, as I said. His friends and students requested him several times to complete the writing of his own thought past. But he looked upon his work on Indian philosophy as the sacred mission of his life and thought himself to be committed to that purpose. And I said uh, at the beginning that commitment not, to, not for the sake of commitment, but commitment for the sake of accomplishment. His love of his mother country and all that is best in it always had precedence over his personal aspirations. With strong determination and unwavering devotion, he brought his life's mission very near its completion. Till the last day of his life, Till the last day of his life, he was working for this and completed one full section just a few hours before his passing away on 18th December 1952. Even on this last day of his life, he worked in the morning and afternoon on the last chapter of the section on Southern Saibijim, Buddha, Volume 5, Rauji. He passed away peacefully at 8 in the evening while discussing problems of modern psychology. All his life, he never took rest voluntarily until his end, he was burning like a fire, full of zeal and a rare brightness of spirit for the quest of knowledge. Another aspect of his life, which showed itself in trances and in deep, unwavering devotion and faith in, the, in his Lord never left him. It is very important. It is regarding personal beliefs. Um, very important because he was not going to any temple. He was not offering prayers. Still then, he was very spiritual in heart and soul. These were manifest in him even as a child and continued all through his life. In trials and troubles and sorrows, he was fearless and undaunted. In difficulties, he had his indubitable will to conquer. He bore all his sufferings with patience and fortitude. His faith in God sustained him with an unusual brightness and cheerfulness of spirit. He never prayed as he thought there was no need of it, since his dearest Lord was shining in his heart with sweetness, love, and assurance. That is why, in different critical stages of his illness, he never gave up hope and tried to cheer up his worried wife and attending doctors. It was through sheer determination and on second faith that he carried out his life's mission nearly to completion when God took him away, maybe for some purpose known to him alone. The fifth volume was published posthumously with a memoir added by Suramanda Sutta, his second wife, and other four volumes were published in his lifetime. Another aspect of his life, Dasgupta was a tyrannical figure as his daughter writes. Daughter Maitri, uh, the daughter to the first wife, she writes, it is not only in our house, but in every household where the master of the house is the most important. He is 95%. Master of the house is 95% and all the others together make up 5% only. That means that his wish, his convenience is more important. Others hardly matter. In our family, this attitude is stronger than in other families. The master of the house is also the ruling deity Puja Pautar Devata, which is the master of the house. 
the master of the house is the bread earner so he also had absolute right to dismiss all other views and lead every member of the family according to his own views maybe this is a necessary and useful custom to maintain discipline in a large joint family but it invariably turns the ruler into an arrogant and selfish person he considers himself to be a god ruling over that particular household but actually he is no god he is just a human being full of weaknesses and bound down by the pleasures and sorrows of life like any other insignificant member of the family just as an omnipotent king is for a country so is the master of a household for its members supervising the destiny of their inferiors especially if the man is a man of qualities his power becomes absolute now the following are among the uh, published works of asanda sutta number 1 a history of indian philosophy in five volumes number 2 hindu mysticism number 3 yoga as a philosophy and a religion number 4 indian idealism number 5 yoga philosophy in relation to other systems of thought number 6 a history of sanskrit literature classical period number 7 a study of patanjali number 8 philosophical essays number 9 natural sciences of the ancient hindus number 10 religion and the rational outlook this is one of the most important books religion and the rational outlook <clears throat> general number 11 general introduction to tantra philosophy number 12 rabindranath the poet and the philosopher these are in english and in, there are also certain books in bengali and moreover dasukta wrote and published beautiful poems and a novel too coming to his monumental work a history of indian philosophy and as i told you botan russell has a history of western philosophy published in 1945 this is in 1922 that is in 1945 esen dasukta declares that the present work is an attempt to present the thought of ancient india at its best his conviction is that this thought still holds the spirit of india and the more it is studied the more do we see that the problems are often identical with those of european thinkers eta bahut important kotha mon rakhiwa darkar the problems are often identical with those of european thinkers aw onno history of indian philosophy padle dekha jibo sethi saman dhar ni chanti je the portions are often identical with those of european space एटिकार पर्सन माने मन कर जो चार बाको ही वुड बी कंपेयर टू सम मेटलिस्ट ऑफ द वेस्ट बुद्धिज्म मोमेंटरनेस कंपेयर टू हेराक्लिटस हियर पर्सन्स आर कंपेयर्ड विद पर्सन्स इफ यू हैव ब्रैडलेज एंड हेगल्स इन वेस्टर्न फिलोसफी वी हैव आल्सो आवर ब्रैडलेज एंड हेगल्स like this but here the problems are tallied problems of indian philosophy are tallied for example satkaryavad satkaryavad um arambhavad mayavad the problems are to be tallied with the problems of the west if uniting india with europe is a goal and it is so in the interest of the unity of mankind and world peace and more so important in in the scenario of global village 
in the 21st century then both india and and theoretical activity the unity of india is not to be sought by the winning of wars and establishing empires expansion or annexation of territories by political activities but in its spiritual activities and accomplishments the significance and potentialities of indian culture can be properly appreciated only by understanding the history of indian philosophical thought but there had been opinions to the effect that the culture and philosophy of india was a dreamy and abstract have done much harm it philosophy is nine khali gudi kon religion katha ko aichi boli critic mane kanti no philosophy only mysticism like this <clears throat> those who had have uh, in their matriculation studies a letter from a father to his son माय डियर चानी आमर पढाउ न तरे म जानतिल त परे तिला चानी के लिखी छी ता बापा मद्रास रोटे होटल ले बसी गिरी ओ चिट से लिखी छी सेई थी इंडियन माने कोन तार ओटे से चित्र दिया छी ह कोनला पटे पन लखन हां सर किछ नै अच्छा लखन सो दीस आइडियाज that the india does not have a philosophy of its own has done much harm it could be healed if people become aware of the true characteristics of the past history of indian thought and form a correct estimate of its special features the history of philosophical ideas is not just dead records of archival value they are potentially relevant for today's discussions difficulties and solutions of problems current in the philosophical platforms in india and elsewhere the discovery of the silent features of indian philosophical thought and due appraisal of their significance may turn out to be important to modern philosophy this was necessary but this was not being done it is unfortunate that the task of reinterpretation and revaluation of indian thought has not yet been undertaken and on a comprehensive scale asen das gupta's work seeks to fill in this void what is excellent about it is that he has tried to be as faithful to the original text as he could and he was a profound scholar in sanskrit you know and has always given the sanskrit pali or prakrit technical terms for the benefit of advanced researchers isen dasupta makes one important observation about philosophical stages described in sanskrit kete <clears throat> analytical mind he says that the style of argument and the method of treatment of topics are different from those we find in modern philosophical treatises so for example indian philosophical problem discussion kala vele we find many analogies we find stories but you will not find uh, normally that in the western philosophical context although in plato there are certain stories uh, um and certain analogies but uh, uh, you will not find it in large numbers in most of the philosophers but essen dasgupta is careful not to press traditional indian thought into european mold to appear ultra modern i mean in a bartan scholar man jemti karchu sadharan to goplam choplam kari kiri maadi makchi kiri dekhe du chanti dekha amare ek thara ke kitta agure am kaichu how ultra modern we are jemti analytic synthetic dichotomy fact value dichotomy e gura ko je am traditional indian philosophy re thila एक देख गंडियान फिलोसफी को तोड़ मरोड़ करिया पड़ो सो दासगुप्त ट्राए टू रिफ्रेन फ्रम सच आक्टिविटीज अफ तोड़ मरोड़ 
he wanted to present the scenario as faithful as he could be. As he puts it, I quote, while keeping all the thoughts and expressions of the Indian thinkers, I have tried to arrange them in a systematic whole in a manner which appeared to me strictly faithful to their clear indications and suggestions. Unquote. ए हला तांको जीवन कहानी ए हला तांकर फिस्ट ऑफ इंडियन फिलोसोफर कहानी तापरे तांको जीवन रो शेष कहानी अत्यंत दुखपूर्ण अत्यंत दुखपूर्ण तार आभास दे सारी छि किंतु जा घटिला माने आउ को फिलोसोफर के सर डील कला को मु एते इमोशनली डिस्टर्ब हे नथिली जेमिति एसेंडा सुतम सर जानि कि डिस्टर्ब हे so this is regarding marital affairs, of course. Suramanda Supta was uh, his second wife, Will Koichili. She was uh, his research student, a very bright research student. And Dasupta was unique in his activities, as you know. And for such unique activities, unless uh, a scholar has some array of uniqueness, in him or her, he or she cannot be able to be associated and be of help in such a task. So, Esenda Sutta located Surama to be of some help in his activities while he was uh, organizing history of Indian philosophy. So, she visited uh, his study room regularly and that was not uh, somehow acceptable to his daughter Maitri. Maitri was in love with some uh, with some boy which uh, Dasupta did not like therefore Maitri was very much aggrieved and uh, um, took such action that brought utter sadness to the life of Dasupta. What is the name? What is the name? What is the name? Would like I shock the NP five fifty seven other state only could you gonna conco the other Zundi? The third Dizan Bossi Konesi Patrocer Kotharta Utile, Chicho Chitkarkola, the Kamakon of Jacob, Dudeso, the Silas of Locon Poresi, Locon Con Buzondi, Dasutu Chacha Chicole, the Bong Say to Boro Osuda Aramala. एवं सवा से सरे फैमिली छाड़ी ले सुरवंदा सुखों बाया ले एवं उभय जगह इंग्लैंड रे जा कोई थली पांच सौ वर्ष कटे ले सी वाज ऑल्सो ब्राइड्स वन डे प्रोफेसर ऑफ फिलोसफी एट कल्चर डेनवर्सिटी मोरल फिलोसफी इन इंडिया जो डे बोल बॉय लेक्शन थी आवर ऑन बॉय गुड्स तमरो तबे ए बी सरे इंक्वायरी Gurgen Bull would uh, a project Nathle. She project Nathla Mircea Eli De and Surinas Dasupto. A Dijang Missikri, Jogo Tontro Sadana Kotile. Elia De, Tango students, parents, and none, even Dasupto, Ubhamu Nakri, a Claudia, what is such project Nathle do as a artery. Among Sethi, she interviewed. Professors and lecturers in Calcutta. She found that the Ascend Sutta was wronged by his own people, by his own progeny, and is by his own people, pupil. Professor Devabrata Sen Sarma said that he had almost been forgotten. Ascend Sutta, almost been forgotten. Professor Govinda Gopal Mukhopadhyaya said that he was a great man. Like Radha Krishnan, 
but had no followers. Professor Amar Kumar Chattopadhyay, who was a first aid student, <clears throat> but um, um, turned his back to his guru, he said that his books are just reference books, which might be consulted by the students, but which are not on compulsory book list. Thus, Dasgupta and his books, including the history, are almost in the oblivion. So let it not happen to any scholar of some value. With this, I pay my small centenary tribute to the legendary figure, grandfather figure in philosophy, Esinda Sutta, and thank you all, one and all, for being with me all this time. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir, for your very beautiful and thought provoking lecture. And it's really a very uh, unexplored area, might be, because we have uh, known uh, SN Gupta very few, but uh, you have touched almost all areas what SN Gupta has uh, uh, gone through. So it's really helped the, all the audience uh, or all the participants. SN Das Gupta. Das Gupta. SN Das Gupta. So Moon Das is Shibidas. Even the governor is Shibidas. It is very good, very good, sir. So it definitely this lecture will uh, benefit it for the particularly for the students or the through the research scholar. And I, I must thank you for your beautiful deliberation, sir. And thank you, thank you very much. And we have uh, many questions, but I think uh, we, we shall take the questions after the another lecture. So uh, be with us. Okay, be with us. And uh, may I now invite uh, Dr. Charuvala Mahanti uh, for her deliberation. Madam, welcome. Now you can give your talk. Thank you. Namaskar. Good afternoon to everyone. First of all, I express my sincere gratitude to the esteemed chair, the principal, Dr. Gopal Haldar sir, and my heartiest thanks to the convener, Dr. Lakman Patra, and coordinator, Sri Francis Barla sir, for giving me an opportunity to speak something in this web seminar. Respected Ganesh sir, and my dear delegates, both students, both teachers and students of this occasion. In this ensuing discussion, I will be sharing my thoughts on Advaita conception of mind or Ahankara. Throughout my discussion, I intend to show that how Adoitin discuss the problem of mind from logical standpoint. So I have made an attempt to confine my discussion with the logical aspect of mind in Advaita philosophy. The philosophy of mind is not a program of experimental inquiry about mind. It is not concerned with factual questions such as who has intelligent mind, who, how do we think, how do we feel, how does one act and react. The psychological question is out of place in the philosophical consideration of mind. Philosophy of mind is concerned with the meaning and logic of mental terms such as thought, knowledge, understanding, feeling, intention, etc. For some philosopher, the problem of mind in philosophy is not psychological. Throughout the history of philosophy, from Plato onwards, the prevailing views has been that mind is some kind of substance and consciousness and 
Consciousness is the specific property of mind. It is an entity residing within the body. The word mind, however, roughly may be defined or may be used in three senses. Generally, the word mind may be defined or used in the common sense of a point of view in three senses, such as empirical conception of mind. First one is empirical conception of mind. Second one is metaphysical or ontological conception of mind. Third one is philosophical conception of mind. So what is empirical conception of mind? Now mind is sometimes used as a collective term for conscious states or process such as feeling, thinking, willing, which are viewed by themselves without any reference to a underlying substance or entity. In other words, it is sometimes employed to mean merely the aggregate or series of mental phenomena. This is the empirical conception of mind. Second one is the metaphysical or the ontological conception of mind. Under this category, mind is used as used as substance, reality, or entity which feels, thinks, wills, viewed apart from the process of feeling, thinking, willing. Again, in another sense, it sometimes stands merely for the mental substance considered apart from the mental phenomena, manifestations or expressions. This is the metaphysical or ontological conception of mind. Philosophical conception of mind. Mind is also used for the concrete unity of mental entity, substance, reality, and its function, process, or manifestation. It stands for the concrete reality constituted by the mental substance together with its conscious states and activities in which it manifests itself. This is the philosophical conception of mind. So in the philosophical conception of mind means the activity which manifests itself. The philosophical concept is the proper or adequate sense of the word mind. But the authoritative doctrine of mind throws a new light in Indian philosophy of mind. Historically speaking, the Advaita system is one of the oldest school of philosophy, but the approach of the Advaitins tunes perfectly with modern analytic trends in philosophy. The Advaitins have removed all sorts of vagueness regarding the meaning of the mental terms. For Advaitin, mind is not supposed to be a mystical entity, nor is it thought to be composed of subtle matter. They do not raise any internal question regarding the problem of mind. They do not think that there is a secret, there is a secret world of mind. Rather, they concerned with the external question that what is mind, not as mind is studied by the psychologist. The Advaita theory of mind does not hold that mind is the bundle of sense experience. The Advaitins discuss the problem of mind in different manner, and they have set the problem from logical standpoint. Sankara and his followers do not regard mind as a name signifying an entity, and it is not a fundamental concept. In Advaita philosophy, the word mind or Antakarana is signified as certain mental concepts such as thinking, knowing, perceiving, inferring, doubting, remembering. They have shown the use of the word mind in different contexts by making logical distinction of Antakarana. So, um, uh, here I have to uh, um, cl clarify that. So in Advaita philosophy, especially Shankara has interchangeably used the word antakarana in place of mind. 
their philosophical question of mind does not admit of any psychological explanation. Sankara does not entertain any psychological element in his analysis of mental concept. His intention is not to miss the concept of mind. Mind is not a mysterious entity. He never says that mental experience can be known by intuition or cannot be expressed in ordinary language. Sankara has tried to show the logical behavior of the word antakarana or mind, and this does not denote a thing. Atoitin has used the word antakarana in the analysis of knowledge. All the Atoitins along with Sankara considered the nature of the word antakarana as a cognitive word. Advaitins believe that knowing involves the idea of knower, the idea of doubting, the idea of memory, or capability of collecting evidence or reliance of memory, the sense of surety about the nature of things. In the analysis of the knowledge, we have to reply uh, to those questions such as, who knows? what he knows, what is the way of knowing, what is the evidence of knowing. Thus, the question implies that knowledge involves the above four ideas as well as these are the constituents of knowledge. So, Advaitins explain the meaning of antakarana or mind by using four ideas such as or which are now called as monos, buddhi, Chitta and Ahankara. According to Advaitins, Ahankara stands for the four aspects of knowledge. All these are general words which are used in different contexts in knowledge. Antakarana is called Manas when it is used in the sense of indetermination or indecision, that is Sangsaya. It is called Buddhi or understanding in case of definite assertion or determination that is called nishchaya. Chitta means memory or smarana. That means remembering or using a concept learned in the past. Antakarana, antakarana also includes the idea of ahankara or ego, the idea of person as a subject of knowledge. The concept of ahankara signifies the person who substantiate knowledge and claims the certainty of knowledge. Corresponding to these four words, there are some other mental words which have been used in the analysis of knowledge. They are called antakarana vritti. There are also four kinds of vrittis, sangsaya vritti, nishchaya vritti, smarana vritti, and ahankara vritti. All these words express cognitive meaning and they are used in all cases of cognitive statements. Sankara has used these four parts of Ankara and Antakarana Viti for explaining the meaning of the word knowledge. Knowledge can be used in the sense of verb and to explain this verb sense as four verb form Antakarana Viti, Antakarana Viti. Again, Knowledge and cognition is also used as a noun, and these four noun are called as are noun forms of the word antakarana. These four different aspects of antakarana fulfill the requirement of knowledge. Knowledge is propositional, and we, we apply concept in knowledge. Neither antakarana nor vritti leads us to think of any psychological entity or psychological states. Rather, the four mental states describe the method of knowledge that Sangsaya stands for decision since the object is known. Nishchaya performs the act of determination of the nature of object. Smarana explains the memory of element of knowledge. Ahankara signifies the claim of knowledge by a person. The different types of mental concepts are required for different types of cognitive statement, such as I wish, I consider, I doubt, I assert. 
डैश अंतकरण इज नॉट ए नेम ऑफ एनी साइकोलॉजिकल प्रोसेस प्रोसेस ऑफ वर्ड्स लाइक वंडर डिटर्मिनेशन मेमोरी नोयर व्हिच कम अप इन एनी काइंड ऑफ एनालिसिस ऑफ नॉलेज अद्वैतिंस डिस्कसेस अद्वैतिंस डिस्कस द वर्ड अंतकरण इन समथिंग स्पेसिफिक सेंस व्हिच इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम इट्स कलेक्टिव सेंस in collective sense it designates the cognitive aspect but in specific sense it represents four ideas distinctively manas buddhi chitta and ahankara all these are the defining characteristics of antakarana they are advaitins defines antakarana as a composite idea which involves the four elements of knowledge the advaitins have shown that this concept can be applied in proposition only as a predicate for example i know i doubt i assert etc mental concepts form the predicate part and these words belong to the descriptive part of language all the above mental concept depend upon the subject for meaningful expression mental word requires a subject in the same way as physical word for example the word stone without attaching itself to the subject this cannot make a meaningful sentence similarly for the common expression like i doubt i consider i understand i know etc all these mental concepts depend upon the subject for meaningful expression here i is subject the advaitins have specific the advaitins have specifically mentioned that mind or ahankara on account of its predicate use and due to its incapability to express a meaningful statement is called jada or passive the opposite of jada is called ajada which can be used independently and outside the propositional context where is mind can be used only in the context of proposition ajada signifies the idea of subject ajada is self expressed it is spontaneous it expresses its meaning without the help of any other any other concept predicate cannot convey any meaning any meaning any meaning unless it is attached to a subject therefore mental words cannot be used as subject so the word mind has to be conjoined to the subject i this that etc the advaita philosophers have not propounded a substantive view of mind their doctrine of mind holds that all mental words can be used as predicates since the word mind cannot occur independently without propositional context it has been classified under the general class of predicate or visaya as opposed to visayi or subject the word visaya does not a physical object but it is an idea or concept as opposed to the idea of subject to use a metaphor visayi is self luminous or swayam prakasa but visaya lacks this characteristics and for this reason it is called opara prakasa the expression self luminous or swayam prakasa does not signify that subject uh, that not signifies signify that subject of visaya can shine nor does this expression stand for metaphor of light the metaphorical word has been import imported just to show the contrasting nature of subject visayi as self complete idea and visayi is not dependent upon any other concept for this meaningful expression according to advaitins mental concepts are unsteady changeable and corrigible so all one all mental concepts are anirita or unreal the advaitin also argue that 
mental words convey only descriptive meaning and mind as descriptive word is variable and corrigible one mental concept can be replaced by another mental concept due to the due to the nature of changeability or corrigibility mental concept have been distinguished from the concept of real or referring expression that is atman or subject thus adwaitins clarify mind does not fulfill the logical criterion of real according to adwaitins the pure referring expression or atman satisfies the logical criteria of real that is incorrigible unchangeable idea the word mind is not a referring word and it always depends upon a referent for its occurrence in knowledge and discourse mind is an attributive word aropya or upadhi because it it is always attached to a locus or subject and it cannot stay apart from the subject it is an incomplete expression the idea of mind cannot claim to have its own being it is not an ontological word the concept of mind is not a fundamental concept in advaita philosophy the advaitins give secondary status to this descriptive word mind and consider it as an attribute of the subject or atman so we conclude this so we conclude with the view that mind or antakarana is a logical concept antakarana is not an empirical ego the cognitive part of mind is called antakarana the two concepts such as subject and predicate in propositional knowledge and they occur only in judgmental context the word jada as predicate may be applicable to mind as well as to body the other things have characterized the both mind and body as sharira both of them are logical predicate antakarana signifies non corporeal characteristics sukma sharira and body signifies corporeal characteristics sthula sharira there is no category distinction between body and mind so in this way i conclude my discussion at what i understand uh, what i conceive from the study of the advaita concept of mind i express the i express here so if there is any mistake then i request my honorable ganesh sir to correct it and also if anybody know something about the concept of mind of advaita vedanta they may also suggest me about the idea of the concept of mind thank you all mm, thank you very much thank you <clears throat> thank you madam for your thought provoking speech on aditya conception of mind now it is open for discussion लेसन दा सुते सर को क्वेश्चन थला ब्रा सर सर कोन थला को कोइ दवा को ता पूर्व रु सुन मो गोटा कथा कहि थिली कहिया पे कहि नै सर मो कहियो चाहु थिली लेसन दा सुत एंड राधा कृष्णन सर बोथ हैव फैट वॉल्यूम्स Uh, on uh, the history of Indian philosophy, some of the attitude on the history of the world, let uh, me make it clear from their own words. Sir, first of all, that's it. I have clarified that uh, to some extent, but let me read out the passage from Volume One, Introductory. of uh, a history of indian philosophy that's what it says like this the achievements of the ancient indians in the field of philosophy 
are but very imperfectly known to the world at large. They are known, but imperfectly known, known through translations. And translations are not adequate ones and exact ones. <clears throat> and it is unfortunate that the condition is no better even in India. India is a source of original text follow no kori, secondary, tertiary source material follow kori gri, research for chundi, japore, jinsha would have a thick power presented hip of nine. So, unfortunate situation prevails both abroad as well as in India. There is a small body of Hindu scholars and ascetics living a retired life in solitude who are well acquainted with the subject, but they do not know English and are not used to modern ways of thinking. Modern ways of thinking means the philosophical categories which we now use to present and uh, discuss philosophical ideas. And the idea that they ought to write books in vernaculars in order to popularize the subject does not appeal to them. Through the activity of various learned bodies and private individuals, both in Europe and in India, large numbers of philosophical works in Sanskrit and Pali have been published, as well as translations of few of them, but there has been as yet little systematic attempt on the part of scholars to study them and judge their value. There are hundreds of Sanskrit works on most of the systems of Indian thought, and scarcely a hundred part of them has been translated. Indian modes of expression, entailing difficult technical philosophical terms, are so difficult from those of European thought that they can hardly ever been ever be accurately translated. I indicated in my presentation. Now let us come to Radha Krishnan. तबे इतनी जो लक्षण है अच्छी दासुक तो ऑब्जर्व कर ले डेट इज इनएडिक्वेट अन्य इनएक्यूरेट प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ इंडियन आइडियाज बाय फॉरेन स्कॉलर्स आज वेल एस बाय इंडियन स्कॉलर्स डेट इज द प्रॉब्लम व्हिच ही इज गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड लेट अस गो टू राधा किशनन Particular parts of Indian philosophy have been studied with great care and thoroughness by many brilliant scholars in India, Europe, and America. Like a different sector. Some sections of philosophical literature have also been critically examined, but there has been no attempt to deal with the history of Indian thought as an undivided whole or a continuous development in the light of which alone different thinkers and views can be fully understood. To set forth the growth of Indian philosophy from the dim dawn of history in its true perspective is an undertaking of the most formidable kind and it certainly exceeds the single grasp of even the most industrious and learned scholar. Such a standard encyclopedia of Indian philosophy requires not only special aptitude and absolute devotion, but also wide culture and intelligent cooperation. This is what happens. Radha Krishnan somehow compromises with the availability of material second and third hand. But he is for a holistic presentation of the gamut of Indian philosophy so that, as I told you um, regarding the position of Arjuna at the beginning, so everything must be studied and known in order to study a particular subject. To study one is to study all, to study all is to study one, like this, the join of principle. This is uh, how um, Radha Krishnan recommends the research uh, methodology and his Indian philosophy fulfills that word he thinks. You see, it is a difference. 
ତାପରେ ପୁଣି ଦେଖିଲେ ଜଣାପଡିବ ଚନ୍ଦ୍ରଦ ଶର୍ମା କଣ କରୁଛନ୍ତି ଇତ୍ୟାଦି ଇତ୍ୟାଦି ସେଥିରେ ସବୁ ଏଇଭଳି କରାହେଇଛି କି ଅନ୍ୟଭଳି କରାହେଇଛି ଯଦି ଗୋଟେ କମ୍ପାରେଟିଭ ଷ୍ଟଡି କରାଯାଆନ୍ତା ଯେତେ ସବୁ ହିଷ୍ଟ୍ରି ଫିଲୋସଫି ଅଛି ଇଣ୍ଡିଆନ ହିଷ୍ଟ୍ରି ଫିଲୋସଫି ଅଛି ତାହେଲେ ସେ ଗୋଟେ ବଡ଼ ଏନ୍ଲାଇଟନିଂ ଜିନିଷ ହୁଅନ୍ତା ଜୟପୁରରେ ଆଉ ଗୋଟେ ସେସନ୍ କରିବା ସେ ବିଷୟରେ ଥ୍ୟାଙ୍କ ୟୁ ଭେରି ମଚ୍ ଲେଟ୍ ଇଜ୍ ଗୋ ଫର ଦି କ୍ୱେଶ୍ଚନ୍ କ'ଣ କିଏ ପଚାରିଥିଲେ ଥ୍ୟାଙ୍କ ୟୁ ସାର୍ ଦେର ଇଜ ଏ କ୍ୱେଶ୍ଚିନ୍ ଟୁ ଆୱାର ମ୍ୟାଡାମ ମ୍ୟାଡାମ ଏଲାବୋରେଟ ଦି ଫିଲୋସଫି ଅଫ ମାଇଣ୍ଡ ଏକର୍ଡିଂ ଟୁ ଅଦ୍ଭୈତ ଫିଲୋସଫି ଅନମ୍ୟୁଟ କର ଅନମ୍ୟୁଟ କର ସାର ଅନମ୍ୟୁଟ କର ସାର ରିପିଟ ଦ କ୍ୱେଶ୍ଚନ ଅଗେନ ଇଟ ଇଜ କ୍ୱେଶ୍ଚନ ବାଇ ଡକ୍ଟର ଶ୍ରୀବାସନ ଦ୍ୟାଟ ଏଲାବୋରେଟ ଦି ଫିଲୋସଫି ଅଫ ମାଇଣ୍ଡ ଏକର୍ଡିଂ ଟୁ ଅଦ୍ଭୈତ ଫିଲୋସଫି ଅ ଇଟ ଫର ମାଇ ନଲେଜ କନସର୍ନ ଦି ୱାର୍ଡ ଅଦ୍ଭୈତ ମିନ୍ସ ଦ୍ୟାଟ ଦି ଅଦ୍ଭୈତ ହ୍ୟାଜ ଡିଫାଇନ ଦି ୱାର୍ଡ ମାଇଣ୍ଡ ଇନ ଏଜ ଏ ଲଜିକାଲ predicate and advaita says that the mind is not an uh, substance not a psychological concept advaita has defined the mind the concept of mind uh, used in a logical proposition just like uh, this uh, with the uh, the mind has meaning the mind means how can i know the meaning of the mind Now through its activities, what I have told that different types of breathes and different types of activity, uh, thinking, feeling, doubting, remembering, all these are the activities of mind. But all these activities of mind, the activities of mind, if we understood, if we try to understood the meaning of all these words, I have to, this mental concept or this mental activities, I have to confine these things with some subject that is why in advaita philosophy the mind has been defined as a predicate part not as a subject part and similarly i hear also uh, similarly i hear also um, uh, remember the uh, linguistic analysis of our uh, reverend professor dr ganeshwar mishra he has also defined the advaita philosophy through the symbol through the philosophical language that subject and predicate asma dusma or this that all these things are eternal and what is we use as a predicate that is not eternal that is changeable the nature of the predicate is changeable Uh, and uh, corrigible and it uh, changes from context to context but this is permanent i can say this is a pen this is a bottle this is a paper but so all always predicate is changeable so like this uh, like or similarly i can say that advaita has defined the concept of mind means the mental uh, the mental concepts he has uh, he has uh, sorry the advaita has uh, taken into consideration while advaita is uh, going to discuss or going to elaborate or going to clarify the problem of mind he attached the mind in the source uh, the uh, mental concepts as the source of knowledge that is why that is why she is uh, the that is why adwaitin say that antakarana is the cognitive part of the knowledge cognitive part of the knowledge so uh, i think uh, what i understand adwaita has defined or adwaita has received the concept of mind in this way for example in a logical sense or in a, as a logical Uh, the part of the logical proposition advaita has granted that mental activities or mental statement mental concepts are the predicate part and to whom it is attached that is called the subject part 
thank you very much uh, madam but uh, that is which is changeable this is not maya vada what sir that that which is not which is changeable does it ha ah, uh, right uh, which is changeable that is only uh, that is uh, not real and what is, uh, what is unchangeable that is real so subject part is unchangeable but predicate part is not changeable okay thank you very much kola sir kola chandra das sir now you are allowed to put your question Kum Narayan Sir. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Doctor uh, Lakshman, um, for allowing me. Um, well, I should thank both the speakers. Uh, well, I should thank uh, Professor uh, G P Das Sir for um, uh, providing the um, uh, uh, the history of uh, Professor S N Das Gupta so nicely. Lot of facts we could know about him um, without uh, touching his books. Actually, uh, I should thank the Professor. um uh, dipida sir for this but uh, i have a, a bit of uh, clarification especially with respect to the title uh, professor das sir has uh, given sn das gupta the historian of india's uh, philosophical traditions i have a bit of um, pain um, having this title because uh, as professor das himself has pointed out that uh, professor das gupta uh, not only touched uh, the history of uh, Uh, uh india's uh, philosophical traditions but also made a critical analysis of the problems that we found in uh, different philosophical system that he passed through so having said this um, the title historian uh, becomes a bit uh, problematic as you see because uh, we see a philosopher in sn das gupta not a well a historical uh, development that he definitely he has touched that but he is more uh, 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 known for his critical analysis and um, um uh, Uh, th that's why that's why i feel uh, rather um, rather calling uh, asn das gupta a historian of india's philosophical tradition no, no, your I your feeling is all right feeling is all right sir, your feeling is all right but what is sir, the pain about the pain is actually what is your uh, pain about hmm uh, the pain is all but the pain is actually uh, uh, hmm. not comfortable with the title history why not comfortable why not comfortable sir actually uh, historian you, you see Yeah, do do you do you, do do you mean to say that history sir. is only descriptive? No, sir. Perhaps no, you no, not suppose exactly, not exactly. You suppose but historian, that any history, sir. be it history of uh, ideas, history of uh, science, or history of philosophy, any history for that matter, is only descriptive. But that is not correct. But 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 any history. So those persons, not... those persons who have uh, described history of any subject only in a descriptive manner. They are uh, not presenting any adequate view of it. No, sir. Uh, so my concern that. is not that, sir. My concern is not Then that. Like, is the way, like the way we call Einstein as a philosopher scientist. Hmm? My, you you have listened to half of my portion and you started reacting, sir. Actually, my question hmm. is, uh, like the way we call Einstein as a philosopher scientist, would it be appropriate? I was just um, trying to know. No, no. You you talked the, you talked for five minutes. If you only no, no, post no, half no, of the no, answer, no, no, no. then how how much no, time you will take no, to pinpoint no, a question? No, would, huh? Would it be would right be to right. call S. N. Das Gupta as a philosopher historian, like the way we call Einstein as a philosopher? He is a historian of philosophy. He is a historian of philosophy. That is it. He is a critical okay. historian of philosophy. That is it. Okay. So okay, that's all right. All right. All right. So my my concern is, oh, would it be right to call him as a philosopher historian? He is not a philosopher of history. He is. He is not a philosopher of history. I am not saying philosopher historian. I am hmm. not saying philosopher of history. I am saying philosopher Then, historian. I am saying philosopher historian. What does it mean? What does it mean? Like what the way we mean? call Einstein the when philosopher. A philosopher when a philosopher would be lighting anything, philosopher wore the name. He would be critical. Philosophy is wholly critical. If somebody is falling short of it, then he would be falling short of being called a philosopher. That is it. No, but uh, when we call a history, sir, I actually you may be having a view. It's my concern, but uh, I may be wrong. I may be wrong. But the word 
no no doubt uh, asim das gupta sir has written uh, a history of uh, indian philosophy well it's all right but we we brand him as a historian so um, um, that's my concern well i may be wrong you, i may be wrong you, you, may be your wrong. your pen does not have a remedy with me thank you okay sir okay okay thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you Uh, uh, Prana Prana was asking something. Sir, Prana from Tripura. Uh, was from asking Tripura, something. he asking that uh, all the modern as well as the recent discussion in, in regard to the different parts of philosophical theories raised hmm. by Western thinkers were already in Indian thought process. What Achha. is your opinion on it, sir? Hmm. Now this has to be seen in a critical perspective. Dasupta says that such uh, bland formation of an opinion is not um, sufficient. It is not uh, welcome. But whether there is any problem tally, problem a problem arising in the um, Indian, uh, um, uh, Indian Indian um, domain is similar. With any problem, any such problem arising in the Western domain, that has to be seen and compared. For example, the analytic-synthetic distinction here in Western philosophy. Does it exist in Indian philosophy? Or a similar one with that? You see the problem of uh, uh, inductive generalization. Inductive generalization occurring in Western logic. Inductive generalization. Uh, in Neo, they are not just um, the same. It is called a Neo syllogism, but it is it a syllogism. Syllogism has only three and only three propositions, three terms. So, in which way can we call it a syllogism? So, these things have to be, have to be gone into detail to find out whether the problems here and the problems arising there. Um, have any contact, any tangential connection with each other. That is seen in the critical perspective. That is uh, the Sutta. Thank you, sir. Uh, another question to Madam uh, by Subhas Modak. What is the difference between mind and soul according to Advaita Vedanta? Mm -hmm. Madam? Uh, sir, thank you, sir. I will try to give the answer. What is the difference between mind and soul, so, according to Vedanta? Uh, Advaita Vedanta. Uh, according to Advaita Vedanta, the Advaitins uh, discussed or uh, in the conception of Advaita, the soul is eternal, the soul is permanent, and the sometimes also Somewhere else, the Advaitin has used the soul as a Brahman while they are discussing or while they are uh, analyzing the concept of Brahman or in the absolute sense that the Brahman is absolute at that in somewhere else, Brahman Advaitin has also explained that soul is with uh, compared with the Brahman, but mind is just uh, what I have discussed. Mind is not just that sort of concept. Mind is a concept which is which has no independent expression. But the soul has independent expression. The soul is soul. If I say according to my discussion or relate to my discussion, I say that it is Swayam Prakasha, soul is Swayam Prakasha, or Swayam is a soul is self-luminated. So here self-luminated not in the sense of the light which we are lighted, in the sense of what? The self-expression. It does not depend any other factor to prove its existence. But what I discussed or what I have, uh, try, I have tried on my discussion to so that mind cannot express its or cannot manifest it, cannot manifest itself 
without the help of any subject. So here, I think, according to Advaita Vedanta, here subject is soul, and the activity, the mental, uh, the activities of the uh, soul is called as the internal activities. That is why there, this uh, Advaitin has used the word antahakarana. That means uh, the internal activities, which is purely private, that can be explained or that can be uh, expressed or that can be um, manifested by the help of the soul or the subject. So here, this according to Advaita Vedanta, the soul is the uh, yeah, soul is the constant factor and the mind is the flexible factor or soul always remains as it is but the mind it changes from one one context to another so i think this is the relation between soul and uh, mind according to advaita vedanta so you are bringing in the concept of soul substance which cannot no, be no. known unknown and unknowable yes. perhaps huh? yes. Soul, soul is not a, a substance like this, our empirical world. So we may call it as a substance in the metaphysical sense. Uh -huh. You are denying uh, substance in the metaphysical sense and in the empirical sense, and you are only admitting soul as a philosophical concept. And then uh, going no, back... Sir, the... No, sir, I have not denied. I have shown that three distinction three meaning analysis but lastly i i have not denied this that there is no i have already shown that the mind may be generally defined in these three ways but although in, in my discussion i get that how although it has shown or uh, described the concept of mind i have not denied the that mind is uh, not empirical status of the mind not the ontological status of the mind i have uh, mentioned that the mind generally or mm. roughly can be defined in three ways somebody may take it as empirical status uh, st st empirical status somebody may also explain it as a metaphysical way mm. but in Advaita philosophy what I perceive or what I explore, that how Advaita has explained the concept of mind in a logical form. I have not denied, sir. There is another difficulty, actually. You are all the time talking about Advaita, but who is Advaita? You should, you should have uh, uh, named some or other and uh, should have quoted from the writings so that things would have been evidenced. Mainly, uh, we are, uh, mainly uh, in uh, in my discussion, I have uh, taken uh, I have taken into consideration the uh, top uh, top Advaita Advaitin philosopher is Sankara, and also some uh, in somewhere also also I have told that Sankara and his followers also. So I have not yes, so, yes, sorry yes, sir yes. I have not details mentioned here, okay. uh, yes, but. Hmm. So, Shankara and his followers, I have told it. Very good. Uh, that is what uh, Shankara says Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya Jeevo Brahmaivana Apra. That comes, uh, I mean, elaborates everything in this. Uh, Shankara does not say anything, Shankara does not say this anywhere. It is not Shankara's statement at all. Can you cite it? What, sir? Popularly, it is said that Brahma Satya Jagan Mitya Jiva Brahmi Manapura. Shankara has not said this anywhere. It is a basic concept of Advaita philosophy, sir. It is popularly said like this. But uh, attribution of this to Shankara is not uh, all right. The question is all right. The question is all right. The question is all right. The main question is all right. But sir, is Charu, please, please answer to the question. Uh, sir, uh, though, if uh, you told that it has not been uh, strictly said by the Sankara, but it was popularly known as this. So the, uh, I think here, Brahman Satya Jagat Mithya, 
here this uh, the uh, Shankara has also told Jodhya Shankara kohi chanti bhi tatha pi se kohi nanti je jagatata ku mithya not in the sense of <coughs> empirical point of view just what I have told lastly mm. the two characteristics defining characteristics of uh, jada and ajada on that basis the the nature of the world is changeable, corrigible, that is why it is called Mithya, but the nature of the um, Brahman is uh, eternal, non-corrigible, non-changeable, it is Sat, Chit, Ananda, that is why the, you know, so Brahman is Sat. And Jiva Brahma Eva Napara means in later Sankara, while Sankara analyzed the nature of the Brahma Atman, he has also elaborated in some places or in in, uh, in his uh, discussion that there is no difference in the sense that Brahman, uh, the basic character or the essential characteristics of the, but or the defining characteristics of Sat, Chit, and Ananda. That is also found in case of Atman. And Atman means this is the empiric, uh, this is called, um, for my point of view, that Brahman is the eternal concept and Atman is the, or metaphysical concept, Atman is the empirical concept. But the nature of Brahman and Atman, for example, the a piece of gold and the ornament, there is no difference. And in some cases also, or in our Indian Advaita, in our Indian concept, in some Upanishads and other historical background, if we found, if we found the other historical or Vedic concept that everybody has given some metaphorical use of Atman and Brahman, or they have shown there is no difference in this sense because Brahman is conscious. If we define Brahman as a conscious being, and also we are a conscious being, and there is no difference between that is why we are we are equal to the Brahman. A piece, a tablespoon of salt, uh, uh, sea water, and a total sea water. There is no difference. It also tastes salt, and if we take a pinch of if we take a glass of uh, water from the sea, it will also taste salt. So in this way, through this metaphorical example, through this ornamental uh, explanation that Sankara, or so to say, the, our Upanishads, or so to say, our other things has established that Brahman, Satya, Jagat, Mithya, Jiva, Brahmaiva, Naparam. And when also lastly Shankara has told, how can we know the Brahmans? Now to know Brahman means to be Brahman. Unless and until we have not realized that I am Brahman, I can never realize what is Brahman. So we have to search out the Brahman among ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody have any question? There is no question in the chat box. <coughs> Thank you to my guide, <coughs> Professor Gonas Prasad Das, and today's co speaker, Dr. Charwala Mahdi, madam, for your nice presentation. Uh, now, I request to our Sri Francis Bala, Ashton Professor, Department of Philosophy, to give a formal vote of thanks. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, it's my great privilege to extend a vote of thanks to the uh, our today's uh, resource person. So, firstly, I would like to thank uh, Professor Ganesh Prasad Das uh, for his excellent and remarkable talk. We have learned so many things of, from his 
lecture today and i must extend my heartful thank to dr charuvala mahanti for her beautiful deliberation on vaidyatva concept of mind it is very informative and thought provoking lecture in fact so once again i thank you madam further i must thank all the participants present over here on the uh, virtual uh, virtual uh, mode and i must extend my thankful to those uh, because without their presence we can cannot uh, would have to uh, organize this kind of uh, lecture and so thank you for active uh, participations you have raised many beautiful uh, questions so once again thank you thank you all for your patience hearing and for your joining and last but not the, not the least i must thank icpr new delhi for providing financial help to conduct this kind of lecture and tomorrow we shall have uh, the second uh, lecture series so i must request all the part participants to uh, to join uh, tomorrow and uh, the lecture will uh, will be started on the same time at 4 pm so i must invite once again to all the participants uh, for the next uh, lecture series uh, so with this i must thank each and everybody uh, present over here Uh, uh and make this uh, event successful one thank you thank you once again thank you francis thank, thank you. you thank you thank Charlie. you everyone thank for you your everyone. cooperation for your dedication to this series uh thank you again tomorrow we will meet at the same time at 4 pm thank you thank you so much phir mulakat hoga uh. Thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you thank you sir and ma'am